Hi everyone and welcome to my Facebook Live today. We're going to be talking about sticky dough and I'm going to be making chapatis for you. This was a result of somebody who had just bought a Thermomix, my newest customer. Hi Yvonne and uh, hi Denise. Great, nice to see you both. Your name's popping up. And uh, this question today about sticky dough and how do you get it off your Thermomix blades when you have mixed and kneaded um, was from my newest customer, uh, who's an Indian couple. Uh, uh, well, they are an Indian couple and delightful, and they want to use the Thermomix for their chapati dough. So I'm going to show you my chapati dough method today. I'll just take the top off this dough that I have already made. And I'm just going to, hi Tina, and I'm going to get uh, the book. In the Fast and Easy Indian book, hi Claire, nice to see your name popping up too. In the Fast and Easy Indian cooking book, which I co-authored with my wonderful friend Rosie Lalji, who is a fantastic cook and obviously an expert um, of um, cooking Indian food, she and I worked together and put that together and we created our chapati method. It's very similar to the chapati method on cookie dough if you prefer to follow that. Um, but I think you'll see that there are a few little differences. And um, so what I'm going to do first is just take the lid off the Thermomix and pop it there. And I've got my flour, which is 170 grams of wholemeal flour. This is spelt flour today that I'm using because it's what I've got. And you have to use what you've got. Uh, most Indian families would buy chapati flour, which is a finely ground wholemeal flour. So I popped this in my Thermomix and I've already ground it for one minute. So it's quite fine, which is lovely. And I'm just going to tip that back in and I have half a teaspoon of salt added in there as well. And I'm going to add 140 grams of water and 25 grams of olive oil or coconut oil. And so that's just pre-weighed and measured and I'm just going to pour it in. And the reason I did that today is because I want to spend most of the time today talking to you about making the chapatis, most of which is the rolling out. So we'll get this started here. <clears throat> After the grinding of the flour, hi Nikki, nice to see you too. Um, and after the grinding of the flour, so it's a fine flour, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this for a minute. So one minute and warm the dough slightly <clears throat> as it mixes. And I'm just turning it to 37 degrees centigrade and mixing it at speed two. So that's just going to warm the dough as it pulls together into little balls of dough. And let me pop these out of the way over here <clears throat> and show you what I've got already in terms of the rolling. And we can get started on that while we are, let me just see if I can sort myself out here. So here we are. And my beautiful assistant is giving me messages here. Could you check in the book for me, John? Because I think 170 grams of flour was right, but I might be wrong. No, it is 250. 250. So 250 grams of flour. So what we can do here is I can show you how to shape your little balls of dough and get them ready for rolling out. So this is half of the dough. And I made it last night because I love to have the dough um, resting and able to absorb the liquid in the recipe overnight because that makes it most digestible and even more delicious than if you make them straight away. Of course you can if you're in a rush. So what I've got now is I've just got my, oh, and because I'm short on the flour, because it was 170, this is what happens when you do Facebook Lives. Sometimes you have to correct a mistake. So 170, 
that is another 80 grams of flour. So I'm just going to add that in here. 48. Let's just see. This one won't be pre-ground, but it'll still be delicious. Last night I didn't remember to grind it ahead of time. So the chapatis that I'm working with today are not pre-ground flour, but um, they are delicious. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop that back on, that lid, and mix it for a few moments at speed two. Thank you very much, beautiful assistant, for catching me out there. That was perfect. And back to the main screen, and it's already pre-warmed, so I'm just going to mix it at speed two. If you find yourself, hi Carol, um, if you find yourself actually making a mistake, usually you can fix it in the Thermomix. And what I saw was a really liquidy, mucky mix. I can hear that that's pulling together because it's making an I'm working noise. And so what you've got here is you've got a very sticky dough, but perfectly pulled together. And it's slightly warm. So just warm to hand temperature at 37 degrees. That's body temperature. For the North American readers, that would be 98.6. Um, in Fahrenheit, uh, viewers, I should say, not readers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mix this dough up. So here we go, three minutes. And I'm going to go to the dough setting. So I just want to find my dough setting, which is the little blade of wheat picture. And I'll go to that and I can set my time. And I'm going to knead this dough for three minutes. So we'll just turn it up to three minutes. Three minutes. Touch the little blade of wheat symbol. And then I'm going to knead. So here we go. Kneading is one of the things that you must stay beside your Thermomix for. And here we go. It does end up working quite hard, so you don't want it to move across your counter. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it here. And you can hear that the Thermomix is kneading and resting. Kneading and resting. So it's like you having a bowl of dough in front of you and you pull the dough up and you knead it, or on the mat or on the tabletop, and then you turn it a quarter of a turn and you knead it again. And what you want is you want a really beautiful, flexible dough. And then you can take your dough, and I can show you while this is finishing its kneading. What I've got is I've got my dough out of the fridge at 12.30. So it had half an hour warming up, 35 minutes by now. And this is half of the dough. So if I break that, I just did it by breaking it. So that's a quarter of the dough. And I want to make four little blobs that I can make into circles with this, or little balls. So if I cut it in half with my spatula, and then in half again, and then in half again for the other side, then what I've got is I've got fairly evenly um, divided amounts of dough, and I can take those and roll them. You can also just twist the dough and pull it apart. And this is about the size of a medium-sized walnut in its shell. So here we go. Those are going to go into my bowl. And then, once they're rolled, I can take, make sure that you don't have any wrinkles in your dough like that. So keep rolling it until it's perfectly smooth as a ball. And that will make it easier to stretch out your, um, and roll your chapati. So what I've got now is my perfectly round little ball, sort of. And I can press it with my thumbs and my fingers. And from the middle, just press it outwards. So you're sort of pressing it and stretching it. And then moving out to the outside edge, back into the middle again and outside and just stretching it so it's a little bit flat. Now, if you don't have a rolling pin, or an empty wine bottle to use as a rolling pin, then you can actually, I'm just gonna check this, make sure that's not moving. You can actually just do this um, stretching out into a circle completely in your hands. 
and, uh, and it just stretches and gets bigger and bigger. You can let it rest for a moment on your lightly flowered mat and then do it again, such as this one that I did before, and I can just stretch it out. Or you can roll it. So make sure that you just lightly flower your chapati both sides. There we are. And then you can move the other ones out of the way. Plop, plop. And then you can roll. So just roll gently. Make sure you've got a little bit of flour on your rolling pin, which I didn't there, so it's stuck a bit. And then just keep turning it and rolling it so that you are just sort of stretching it out into a circle about 15 cent, uh, centimeters diameter, about five inches. And then what you've got is you've got fairly much a circle and you can put that in to a preheated um, frying pan, heavy base frying pan, um, that you heat on high and then as soon as you're ready to put these into the frying pan, you just slap them in. And chap chapati refers to the slapping. I place them in carefully because I don't like slapping them in. I'm not as confident as the Indian ladies who work with their pans on a fire in India. Um, so there we are. I've got one of my chapatis ready to go. And just to show you again, I'll just roll this other one out. And here we go. I like actually cooking my chapatis in an aga. So if you happen to have an aga, then that's a great way to cook them. Or if you have a pizza stone, you can preheat your oven to about 200 degrees with your pizza stone in it. Or if you've built a pizza oven outside in the garden like you have, Claire, and you've got it on for something else, you can make some chapatis too. So here we are, nice round circle there. And that then is ready to go onto your pizza stone or into the bottom of your roasting oven in the aga. And what we've got, John is going to show you the chapatis that actually I made this morning. And so here we are with the chapatis already. They puffed and I didn't press them down flat because I actually quite like the puff. And, uh, but you could press them down flat. And what I'll do there is just pop that at the front. When they come hot out of the oven or out of your frying pan, Pop them onto a tea towel because they'll be hot to pick up. And then after a moment, just brush them lightly with um, some melted ghee. You could use olive oil or coconut, melted coconut oil if you wanted to instead. And you can see the difference, how that just makes it look really shiny and beautiful. And then wrap them in a tea towel and uh, keep them warm while you cook the rest of your batch or however many you want to cook that day. If you're not cooking them all, then cover your dough with cling film quite tightly or put it into a Ziploc bag in the fridge and just keep it for up to two days. Sometimes I freeze some of my little balls as well and then I've got the ability to make four chapatis if I want to for just the two of us. So I'll move that over there and I do have, oh, there's a question, John. You might like to explain to our viewers as to why you're back to front. Oh yes, I forgot to say, we did have a funny um, moment of the screen turning green just before we were going to go live. So um, here we are and uh, hi, Miriam, hi, Jane. And um, so we are now sort of reversed, I think, in your view, but there's the chapatis on a lovely plate and you can keep them warm. If you make them ahead of time, you can actually wrap them in foil in a stack and then warm them through in the oven later. So that's my ghee, which I also made in my Thermomix. And if you want to learn to make that, then let me know and we can do that on another Facebook Live another time. And you might notice actually that I've got a wonderful picture of Indian spices. Hi, Jay, yeah, good to see you too. And hi, Ali. And behind me, I've got this beautiful picture of Indian spices. And later this week, I'm actually going to be talking um, about, well, I'm going to be making a carrot cake and talking about refreshing your ground spices. 
So you can see there's lots of brown spices around the edge in this picture here. And we're going to be talking about making them even fresher and more flavorful in your cooking and baking. So, rightio. So now we get to, I'll just pop these over here. And now we get to getting the dough out of the Thermomix bowl. So you can see that that's a really sticky dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at what I'm doing here and pull the dough out as much as possible from around the blades with my spatula, which is shaped to fit the bottom of your Thermomix bowl. Obviously you can knead these by hand if you don't have a Thermomix. And so what I've got here is I've got quite a lot of dough stuck around the blades. So I'm just going to pull a bit more out with my spatula. And then I'll show you how to get even more out. When I make um, and mix scones or cheese scones, my favorite, in the Thermomix, then usually with this little trick I'm about to show you, I can get all that extra dough out and make an extra scone, which is always use useful. That could actually be an extra chapati left in there right now. So I'm putting it back on the uh, base on the Thermomix machine and I'm going to go back to the home screen so you can touch the little house picture to do that. There we go. And literally, I'm just going to turn the speed up. So this is going to flick the dough off to the sides. So if you've got earphones on, you might want to take them off. It'll only be a second or two though. And then reverse. There we are. And I can hear it flicking off to the sides. So nice and easy. What you've got now is you've got a little bit of dough around the blades. That should be quite easy to get off with my spatula. And you've got lots of dough flicked off to the sides. And I'm just going to pull that out and add it to my pile of dough here. A nice big string of dough there coming out and the dough that was around the sides of the bowl is now out and in your chapatis. The other thing is I can actually get the rest of that dough out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the finger grips on the bottom of the Thermomix bowl, open the base and then carefully lift out the top of the blade unit and then I can go with my spatula and you can see Hopefully I don't drop it back into the Thermomix bowl again. But you can see that you can quite easily just go underneath your blade there and get it out very, very easily. And then you can just cover the, put the bowl back together again with the blade in it. Come here. And then you can um, put some cold water into it. Found another bit here. So let's turn that around. Um, you can put cold water to cover the blades and let it sit for a moment and then give it, or you can let it sit for however long until you need your Thermomix again. So I'll pop that back together again. Cover the blades with cold water and just give them a whiz. And it's really easy to use cold water for this um, because it sort of melts the dough. You know what it's like if you put water and flour together, if you put lots and lots of extra water in it, the glueiness becomes um, just watery. And so the flour kind of melts into the cold water, which is really super. And then you've got your Thermomix back and ready to use again, which is lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get my dough here and I'm going to put that into an oiled bowl and cover it with cling film and pop it in the fridge and then this will be my batch for tomorrow while I use the chapatis that I'm making today. And uh, so remember that, where did I put my book? Here it is. Remember that you can find the recipe in Fast and Easy Indian Cooking. And right now, people who subscribe to my recipe blog for recipes can get a 20% discount 
on my recipe books during the month of May. So feel free to subscribe and then you can get a nice copy of Fast and Easy Indian Cooking or I Love Chocolate, I Love Thermomix for 20% off. So there we are. That is it for today. And happy chapati making, happy easy dough making, and, uh, and happy cleaning of your bowl. Bye everyone.